All right. Hey, welcome, folks. Uh, Lester and Jamie here. And today we're going to bring you something pretty unique for Valentine's Day. Go ahead and talk about it. All right. So have you all seen the newlywed game from, you know, way the back 1970s, in the day? The 1970s, the yeah. newlywed game. I didn't want to give it a date. Gosh, that makes us feel old. <laughs> well, I wasn't alive then. Anywho, so today what we're going to do is have our own version of the I'm a Survivor Sanctuary newlywed game. Mm -hmm. Where Jamie and I are going to pose questions that we both created. And we're going to try to figure out how well we know one another. Hey, so, go ahead. It's going to be pretty interesting, I think, because, you know, life gets busy around here and, and you just kind of you just kind of roll with the punches. So, here we go. So, what we've done is we've both created some questions that we have not shared with each other. And so, it's going to be very impromptu. I have no idea what her answers are. She doesn't know what my ans answers are. But what we're going to do is, on an answer sheet... I'm going to give the answer that I think, uh, to, uh, that my answer to her questions or my questions, and she will give the answers to the questions on her side. This is not coming out right. Help me. Okay. So I, I, I need to back up a little bit. It's Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're doing this is because, you know, it's Valentine's Day. I did say that. You didn't say that. I did. I don't know if you said that. Okay. Well, I'll just, we can, I can. <laughs> you can well, edit that out if you need to. Dean, that's one point for Lester. No, it's not. All right, so go ahead. All right, so we, we both will ask you one question, but it applies to both of us. So we'll answer what what we know for ourselves, but what we think for the other person as well. And then we'll reveal them to you, and then we'll discuss. Yeah. Ready? Okay, so the first question is, I'll let ladies go first. All right, what is each other's least favorite farm chore? All right, least favorite farm chore. So I will list what I think, what my least favorite farm chore is on my side. And Jamie will say what is her least favorite farm chore. And then we'll see how well we know each other. You already have them? Yeah. I know what I don't like. <laughs> well, that was her question. And I guess if it's your question, you would already kind of be knowing what your answer is going to be. Yep. My least favorite farm chore. Knowing yours is easy for me. Knowing my own... There's a lot of farm chores that I'm just not real, uh, you know, that I just don't look forward to doing, but I have to have them done. I know one. Oh, wait. Okay, I think I'm ready. All right. All right, so since she asked the question, I will reveal first. All right, so as far as what is my least favorite farm chore. So for me, my least favorite farm chore is anything having to do indoors. Folks, I mean, I understand that you may call them farm chores because most things are actually done outside, but there are some things that have to be done inside the, inside the house. And if it has to be inside, I am absolutely miserable. So is that what you said? <sighs> kind of, but not really. I put cleaning out the barn. So, because I didn't consider the house as part of the farm chore. I consider that a life chore. You know what? I think that <laughs> might be the same thing. But uh, actually, to me, the barn is actually... I, I, I like to clean the barn. I don't like to wash, fold, you know, all those kind of things. He's not domesticated, is what he's saying. None. <laughs> but those things are life skills that I guess everyone has to do, not just people on the farm. I don't know. We didn't think about that one as far as uh, the rules the, go. The limits. That's okay. Let's okay. Wait. We're learning well, as we go. All right. Here. So, so no point. And now for Jamie, I said her least favorite farm chore is anything landscaping. She hates doing anything, not with her hands, but anything as far as planting and mowing and weed eating. And you said mowing. I, I can't and read. I said mowing the lawn Boom. and weed eating. <laughs> Folks, I know this girl. So wait, that's one point for me then. Because I got it right. Time out. The first one doesn't even count because you took it to the house. You took it to like, I don't want to do laundry. That's not wait, a farm chore. No, well, I was just going to say anything farm related. Okay. Anything related to what All we All right, do. I'll give you the point. Let's just not. Let's just go ahead. We'll just skip that one. <laughs> We'll just skip the first one. Look, we're, we are you already four minutes in and we have done nothing so far. We've done nothing I'm at this point. Coffee, that's okay, let's go to my question. All right. All right. Uh, what has been your worst experience here? 
on the farm. Now, Jamie's been around for about two years, folks, a little over two years. And my question to her is, what has been your worst experience here on the farm? <clears throat> Like I said, because I created the question, I guess to me, I had time to think about it. So, uh oh, there goes my questions just flying. You, you I'm not yours? ready. Okay, I'm gonna Hold grab on. my questions. The wind has just picked up. We tried to come out early this morning, earlier than normal before the kids all wake up because it's gonna get really loud around here. Everyone's here. Um, and so once the kids wake, whoo, you start hearing footsteps running through the house and dogs start their barking. I may have to edit a lot of the white space out of the uh, yeah, the we'll video. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of that. Or you just sit here and smile. All right. Are you putting on the same page? Or are you just starting a new page for each question? No, I'm just going to go down until okay. I run out of space. Okay. Okay, so the question was, what has been your worst experience here on the farm? All right, so for me... I put the death of any animal. <clears throat> so we've lost a few, and each one of them, I, I don't wanna say it gets harder and harder or is, is <clears throat> less than the next, but uh, they all suck every time. Okay, so I actually put that Jamie's worst experience was losing Patty. What's funny about that is, and what's not so funny about that is, my answer for myself is also losing Patty but in a very different sense. I have to explain my answer real fast. So, Jamie actually physically lost Patty. She had just begun to come out to the house. You know, she travels for work, and she travels for work, and I guess it was probably her first time to actually stay here at the house. Now, I, you know, I go to school, I teach, so I leave every day. And I guess I trusted her enough to hang out here without me being home. You know, she already brought her toothbrush. You know how girls are. So, yeah, she was going to stay here uh, and work from the house that day, and I leave and go to work. And around noon or so, my phone rings. Now, I, she knows that I can't get phone calls from school. And so when I saw she was actually calling me, I was terrified to answer because my boss walks by or the kids rat you out, and it's, it's all hell to pay. But I quietly said, yeah, hello. Well, she is in hysterics. Because Patty the pig, you know Patty. Patty the famous pig, okay? Patty the world famous. This is right after Harvey, right after the coming video. 39 million views on Patty's video. And Jamie <sighs> lost her. I lost Patty. Jamie had one job that day to take care of Patty. And she couldn't do it. So truth be told, she never lost Patty. Patty was raised here in the yard like with the dogs. Patty never had a, uh, uh, a fence. But Patty was never in a pasture. Patty lived around the house. She was a big old pet pig who came inside the house and lived outside the house. So what Patty would do on a regular basis, a daily basis, is make her rounds. And if you don't know this already, every house that you can see around us, we're all family. The Morrows have a you know beautiful piece of property here, and we all have our homes built around. And so Patty knows that when she's hungry, she gets her breakfast here. But when she wants that little snack, she goes to my mom's, goes to the front door, starts doing all her does, and my mom will end up throwing out a handful of popcorn. And yeah. then she'll go to Kim's and my sister and start asking Kim will throw out a, you know, whatever we whatever you had laying around, you know. Your... Lester left that part out though on the. Uh, this is how you know. This is how we do things around the farm discussion. <laughs> So I frantically am calling Lester after I have looked everywhere and figured out that she is hauling it back to the woods. I'm shaking corn. I got leftover dinner. And that's the thing. Patty didn't want corn. She knows what time of day she gets fed corn. Patty didn't want but corn. But during her routine, she wants her snacks. And so Patty left and Jamie couldn't catch her and she was panicked. And if you don't know this about pigs, folks, pig people know. You can't make a pig do anything that they don't want to do. Nope. 
And so it was hilarious, but uh, she, I, we have laughed about that. Oh, so what was funny was on the phone, even though I had a class full of high school kids all watching me, you know, eyeballing me, wondering, why do I have my phone? They can't have theirs. I go into this little dramatic kind of thing where I'm like, no, not Patty, no. And I start she's screaming and shouting, which makes it worse. Then she starts crying. And I finally had to call the whole bluff. I'm like, stop, leave her alone. Patty knows what she's doing. And so I know that was a horrible experience for you. Uh, but the Completely funny traumatized. Thing, and funny thing is, she called me at noon, but she'd been chasing this pig around since nine o'clock that morning. Yeah, three she, hours of my life were chasing a pig around acres and acres of farm. She, I met his whole family this way. <laughs> she even called folks that she knows from up north who have animals asking, how do I get this pig back? <laughs> so that was a, a traumatic ordeal for her. Now, my answer uh, for myself was also losing Patty. But folks, you know that it wasn't that kind of losing. The day that we actually lost Patty, lost Patty across that rainbow bridge was just a horrifying experience for me. Um, because like I said, Patty had been around from, Patty was the beginning of the, us. You know, Patty had been here since the beginning. And Patty is what created us. And for her to get, you know, to number one, survive me for, for the years that I raised her. Because I, I think I said it in, in that viral video. I said, this pig has nine lives. I think I said, this effing pig. Listen, she, she has nine lives. She has done and been through all kinds of adventures and survived them all. And Patty was just that kind of a pig. And she just kept going and going and going. And so... Uh, to actually lose her to a heat stroke that summer was just horrifying. And to, you know, but, but, but in all, so to end this sad thing on a good note, Patty was alive when I came home that day. She'd had the stroke and she was barely breathing, but she'd made her way out to her little shed that we, her little piggy pen, we called it here in the front pasture by the pond. And that's where, that's where I, uh, she was laying. And so I laid down beside her. Oh, this is going to be tough. I should even talk about this. I laid down beside her and I loved her. And she had a smile on her face. She had a smile on her face. She smiled and her little tail was wagging and she took her last breath right there. And, and we, we, we uh, watched that and we cried over that. But yeah, so I'm going to get off that topic. So losing Patty. <laughs> was, I also said the death of Patty for that. So, that's a point for you. So what I'm going to do on my paper is above you, I'm going to put a point. Okay, you have a point. Too. And then I have a point. Now, when you ask, answer my question, what, uh, what was the worst experience? Mine was losing Patty, but you said mine was... <clears throat> the death of Patty. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay. So that means <laughs> you have two points in, right? No, no, no. That was my point. Oh, that was your point. That was my point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So wait. So then don't I get two points from that first question and this one? Oh, the first one we said didn't count. That it, was a trial. It can count. It can count. No, I mean, that's cool. Fine. I'm, I'm going to take off with this game anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, Jamie's question. All right. Uh, what's your favorite video to date? What's each other's favorite video to date? That's a hard one. <sighs> Our favorite video to date. Okay, well, you guys do know that we put out a video a day where we try to. Some days we you know, get busy and we can't. So we've been doing this for a while, folks, a couple of years now, and there's a lot of videos out there. So my favorite video to date. It's hard actually because there's so many to choose from i don't think it's hard at all really i mean i have my obvious favorites and for for my obvious reasons but i don't know if you would know those i don't know if i know it that's the thing i actually don't think i know yours this time at all okay so jamie asked the question i get to answer first so her, the question was what has been your favorite video up to date now we've had some funny ones we've had some sad ones We've had some that were just unbelievable. If you did not see them with your own eyes or through the camera, you wouldn't believe they could even happen. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, Hold wait on. a minute. I just remembered something. 
this is not really fair that I had to give her explanation to her own question. Oh, man. Oh. All right. So, to me, my favorite video to date would have to be the one where we saved the baby puppy, Lucy. Oh. So, if you don't know this story, it was, uh, it was probably the best and the worst day of my life here. Because we came inside the house. It was over the holidays. I came in, luckily, I came inside the house to check on Maggie's babies. And, you know, I had her moved inside the house because it was cold. So I had her in a little pool, the little swimming pools that you use. And you let your puppy, you know, nurture, uh, do their, whatever that word is, feed their babies from there. Nurse their babies from there. And we had, I think, uh, there, should, there should have been 10. We could only count nine. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking that around. Was awful. It was so awful. And I thought she might have been holding one of the babies. Yeah, he did. He came out and he asked me. He's like, I'm like, where's that puppy? other puppy? I'm and like, Maggie's just laying there and these puppies are all nursing. And I only saw nine puppies and I went back to count again. And sometimes they can get all tangled up and you don't really can't see them all. And I only saw nine. And I, she didn't have it. And I thought maybe it had somehow climbed out, even though they were, they were way too young to be climbing. Mm -hmm. And I began to look around and I couldn't find it. So I just happened to begin to pull puppies off of Maggie, and that's when Maggie stood up. And when she did, I saw there was a puppy underneath her, and that puppy had been kind of pushed into the corner, and it, it was it was it was gone. And so I reached down and I picked it up, and I had no idea how long it had been gone. It was gone. purple. It was oh, it was purple. It was cold. And we began to uh, just administer CPR, and I'd only seen my dad do it a couple of times to. Uh, larger animals, you know, farm animals, uh, the whole, you know, the typical CPR. I have no idea where a puppy's actual heart and what needs to be. So what I did was obviously, you know, I put the breaths and I just began to do the massage and just kind of press down to where I felt the, the ribs, knowing that the ribs protect the heart. Mm -hmm. And so we did that for a while and uh it was just the most miraculous thing ever when that puppy it was, began we to actually call. jumped whenever so the first time that it took a breath we both jumped like <laughs> we both had been you know working through it do just trying to figure out if, it, if there was any way possible and the first time that it took a breath we both jumped and it scared it scared us because we couldn't believe what we saw we thought it was just a a reflux <clears throat> or something that happened you know oh but so it wasn't but no that was a um that was a, an amazing memory. What was the question even? I don't forget where your what question was. What was our favorite but, video? Yeah, so in saying so, folks, I can watch that video today. And I see it. It pops up every once in a while. It still is making its rounds. And when it pops up, I, I cannot not watch it. I have to watch it all the way through. I know every word for word. I know what's going to happen. And what's neat is whenever it does pop up and I, I'm reading the comments on it. And like I say, it can pop up to so many different sources have been playing it i read the comments and the comments even are powerful and they make you feel like you know they make you feel like your life is worth something that sounds horrible to say because i hope that our lives are all worth something they but are. that on that particular puppy for baby lucy who has an amazing life by the way we follow her her little story and she could not she's the happiest dog but to know that we lost her i mean she was and we were able to not. bring her back it was amazing. So if you haven't seen that video, you'll have to watch it. I, I'll put a link to it. Whew. I should, this is a hard game for it, me. I told you it was hard. I don't know why I'm so right. emotional today. So I actually man thought, out, Lester, man I out. thought your favorite video would have been Shirley. <clears throat> which one of Shirley? The Shirley's head stuck. Okay, which one <laughs> of Shirley's head stuck? I know. Oh. I just thought, like, I, I thought that it's probably one of our most known but it also was something that we just, we still laugh about. Because it's still, it's still Shirley. It just never ends. In saying so, folks, I have a video on my phone now that I have not had a chance to upload. Even with all of this brand new fencing, <laughs> even with all of this brand new fencing that that's impossible for a goat to get his head stuck in, guess what? Yeah. Shirley's Keep watching for that video. I have to get a chance to go to uh, Starbucks and upload, but it'll be coming out soon. Uh, okay, so so as far as the answer to your question, for you, what is your favorite video? I think it might be Ringo's Harem. Because, number one, that was 
the first video that you filmed yourself that made the rounds and went crazy viral, it made Ringo even out to be more of the stud, the player that we know he is. I mean, and it was captured beautifully. It was captured beautifully. Your emotions in that video were just, just so raw. Even though it wasn't raw as far as the coming home video and some of the other ones that we with the emotions, it was a different emotion. But it was super funny, and I cannot watch it without laughing my ass off. So, did you not agree with that one? No, I actually put Saving Ivy. That oh. is that is one of that's a I guess probably because she was um she was probably one of the hardest rescues and one of the. One of the animals who probably our first biggest struggle, I think. So it's it may not just be the video that I'm attached to. It's the story. It's the it's all the work that we put into her and how far she's come and just how her personality came out. And man, I mean, we fell in love with her the second we saw her. Maybe even before when we when we got that call. But um, I love that little girl. Well, I'll story. say this: we never thought she would make it. No. And so even though we videoed that journey we did not think she was going to make it. And we thought that we'd have a lot of video that would just be, you know, put away that you would never see because all that was going on and you had no idea. It was a struggle that we were working with and working through. And that poor baby had so many issues. But she is alive and well, and she has turned into the most amazing personality out there. She is a character, folks. You know, she is a character. I like to say that I've shed a lot of tears on, on the sanctuary. And... I've shed a lot of tears over Ivy, but for both sides of it. So, so in the beginning, it was hard. It was sadness, and it was I, I hurt for her. And then now, I, there are times where she comes out and she makes me laugh till I'm in tears. And I mean, even the <laughs> like, other day, like when when Lester falls off the horse, and I'm you know bantering and I'm just scared and everything else. Here comes Ivy, hee hawing right in the middle of everything, just to interject and remind me of, of who she is and that no uh, she wanted everyone to know what had happened in her own way she, she was trying to say lester's okay y'all come <laughs> look <laughs> i love that girl all right so no point for that one no no points no points so the score is still lester one jamie one we're going to our fourth question all right and it's my turn and i say what has been your most difficult transition from your old life to your new life. Ooh. What has been your most difficult transition from your old life to your new life? Now, just for myself, you all know that I've been doing this most of my life as far as the farming part, but the whole sanctuary part is new. Yeah. So there are things that are required of the sanctuary that are not required of the being just, uh, you know, following in my dad's footsteps and being a hobby farmer. So that's what I mean by that. Okay. So what has been your most difficult transition from your old life to your new life? And we both had an old life. Me as a hobby farmer slash school teacher, Jamie from, you know, living in the city, you know, you know, having a home base with, the, you know, with all of the luxuries of city life to working now and living on a farm sanctuary. And since I asked the question, you get to go first. Okay, so <clears throat> I actually said that for me, it's it's the sanctuary life. I tied it all together. Um, it's being in the eye of the public and and being under scrutiny and under criticism all of the time. Um, we have never claimed to be perfect in anything that we do. In fact, I think that I'm the most that says. <clears throat> I'm new to this and I'm learning and I'm trying. I'm new to the camera. I'm new to farm life. I'm new to Texas. So uh, my world has done a complete, like, I don't know, more than 360 a few times uh, over the last couple of years. And uh, I think that uh, that's probably been the biggest, the biggest uh, part for me. Well, guess what? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> because I, I said her transition is the social media. Now, I meant the times that was allotted to it, but you have no idea, folks. 
you know, I take care of the, the farm stuff for the most part. Jamie comes out and gives me a hand, but Jamie has to handle the messages and all of the things that go along with the running the page. And that takes so much time. And in saying so, we have, I would say, close to 300 or more messages a day. And those are like sent to the email. Not to mention that we have a lot of comments that we try to go through and reply to. And so time-wise, it is just overwhelming. Not to mention in all that time that you spend when you do have to see things that are negative. And listen, let's be honest. It is hard to be criticized and take criticism. As a school teacher who teach older kids, they all hate your guts. So I'm used to everyone hating on me. But I mean, it's in the shockers. long run, they love you, you know. <laughs> but for that day, man, when they come in there with them, you know, the world on their shoulders, yeah. So I'm used to taking criticism. As for the hurricane, you know, with the fact that I wasn't able to be here for the babies when they needed me the most, you don't know what that did to me. And it compounded it by having so many folks, you know, telling you what a piece of crap you were and how horrible of a pet owner and everything else. And so you have to become desensitized to that kind of stuff. Now, even now, two years later, when we read comments, <clears throat> a lot of times we wake up in the morning and we read our comments in laying in bed on our phones and where Jamie gets bothered and upset by them, I slap them off. I'm like, screw you. I, so I would say, I've got <laughs> oh a lot my God. better. This lot person better. has no idea. I, when is the last time you, you know, run a sanctuary? And so that's my attitude towards a lot of the things. Now, don't get me wrong. You see me go off on some rants. Sometimes someone can say something and a few people jump on board and it can kind of like pin you into a corner. As a man, what do you do when you get pinned to a corner? You come out swinging. Um, so it can be, it can affect us both. Now, okay, I, I'm going to take my turn here because you kind of stole that a little bit. Oops, um, sorry. I am used to criticism. I work with doctors, I work with hospital CEOs, administrators, and, and that's my job. I can take criticism on any day, but I guess when it becomes about your personal and you're putting your personal life out there and you're, and it's you, it's not, I'm not following a, a company's directive here or anything else. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not under a, you know, guidelines and that type of thing. We literally write this book. So I take a little bit more to heart probably than Lester does. And I don't, I'm not offended by it, but I definitely pay attention to it more. But it is a challenge and it is, it is a challenge to keep up with social media, the website, Instagram, Facebook, regular email, um, and then all the business side of it. And then, uh, you know, I love the animal part too. So as Lester says, he takes care of all the animals. I still make time to come out because I want to be a part of that too. And, and that's, that's my passion. I, I never dreamed that I would be like answering 300 emails on social media a day or any of, never do we ever think this. It started for the animals. That's who we are. And um, so, so I still make time to, to get that into our lives too. And um, saying so, my time with social media is pretty much spent by videoing things and then uploading those videos. So we spend, I get, let's say, equal time doing both roles. I would roles, say, yeah, we definitely, we definitely cross over. One it. thing I do not do is take comments to heart. So don't ever think you're going to offend me, folks, because you're not. <laughs> okay, so I get a point for that because I got that I one right. Did. Now, what has, go ahead. It's funny, though, because I actually put that being. Wait, well, re repeat the question again. The question again. Uh, it was my question. Yeah, it was your question. You repeat the question. What has been the most difficult transition from your old life to your new? So I said, I actually put being in the public eye and under scrutiny for Lester. So as much as he says that he doesn't take it to heart, uh, you don't see any Jamie rant videos. <laughs> and I said, oh, <laughs> trying, folks, trying to change what I eat and what I have eaten my entire life. Don't. Listen, people, you don't get it. You love these babies. And the last thing you would ever do is want to see one of them processed and, and put into your dinner plate. And so ultimately, I, I, I am guilty of whenever we used to go to Walmart or where we'd shop and buy groceries, I never thought twice about grabbing that pack of bacon or grabbing that hamburger meat and doing those, you know, grilling those burgers on Sunday afternoon. 
And so a lot of the sanctuary and the, you know, the lifestyle change has been brought on by folks like you and made you rem remind yourself that you offer this kind of forever home to an animal, yet how can you allow other animals? And so it's made you do a lot of deep soul searching and thinking about it, and I have struggled with that. I'm really good for the most part. I can just, I cannot say no to eggs. And I said, Jamie, do eggs really count? Do eggs really count as meat? And, and, and she says they do. And Google says that they do. But I still don't know. I, I would like someone to challenge that because if I could have just eggs. He doesn't want anyone to challenge that. You'll see a rant video. <laughs> <laughs> so no, the, 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 the lifestyle change has been my eating. And so um, I, I, I'm getting better. I fall off that wagon sometimes. And then I kick myself in the ass because of it. And so, yeah, so that's been my biggest challenge is just trying to live the lifestyle. Not, you know, you got to practice what you preach, folks. You have to practice what you preach. And I'm sometimes, I struggle with that. It's kind of like uh, folks who like have serious, like, uh, addictions. Yeah. And so you can become addicted to, to certain diets. And not just fast food, but just what you eat in your diet can be very addicting. And so, and it's tough. So, let's move forward. There's still a sticker on the bottom of this coffee mug. No, I think I saw mine too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't, well, we were gifted these. Yeah. And mine says King of the Farm, and mine Queen says of the Farmhouse. Queen of the Farmhouse. But we don't always like to drink out of the things that we're gifted because we don't want to break them because things do slip and fall and break around here, especially the animals. Uh, I would around. say goats get up here while we're drinking coffee and they're going to take that down. We had to keep them locked up. Everyone's morning. locked up. The dogs are inside the house. Okay, listen, this is a 30 minute video and I bet folks are running out of time. So we should probably do one question each and we'll be done. Okay. Hey guys, the score Lester 2, Jamie 1. After four questions, it seems like I know her a lot better than she knows me. What's up with that? <clears throat> Do guys ever win these things? All right, I'm about ready to pro pose you uh, pose you a question that you're not going to know the answer to. Go ahead. <clears throat> On date night, what is our Starbucks order? Hold on, that's not really fair. Oh, that's fair. No, because I all. When we go to date night, my goal is to get in there, get my video uploaded using their Wi-Fi. And in saying so, Jamie normally stands in line and does the ordering and stuff. I'll try. I know, I know what color it is. <laughs> so, I know my answer. On date night, what is each other's order? I'm about ready to get a point here, y'all. It's about ready to be tied. Maybe two points. Actually, I'm getting two points. <laughs> oh, no, I think she might. Oh, no, I think that you might. Uh -huh. Okay, well, I no, no, because I know my own answer, so I'll get my point. All right, you ready? So she asked a question I will answer first. So for me, my favorite drink at Starbucks is the vanilla bean frappuccino. Boom. Vanilla bean frappuccino. <laughs> okay. And, sorry, but Jamie's drink, it has to be a caramel coffee. Is there even such a thing? Damn it, you got it right. Macchiato. Oh, all I knew was the color and the smell. <laughs> oh, I'm still winning. I'm still this winning. It's so, my own game and I'm losing at it. So I got three and you got two. Wait, I got two there. Oh, no, no. You got to get them both right to get a point. You have to get them both right to get a point. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So I've gotten both right three times out of five. You've gotten both right two times out of five. And this is our last question. <laughs> and it's your question. And it's my question. <laughs> okay, this is pretty recent. As you're all sitting here looking at my hand and see all this rope burn across it, you're probably pretty gross, gross, grotesque. Is that a word? Grossed out by the fact that this guy looks like he has, you know, something seriously wrong. He has leprosy. No, listen, this is another farm-related injury. And I get them all the time. 
So my question is, what has been your most painful farm-related injury? Because we have both sustained a number of them. Me more than her, obviously. But what has been your most painful? Are we going all the way up to even yesterday? Yeah, whatever. I'm going to win this battle. I actually have one more question. Come on, can we do one more? All right, one more. That's fine. Okay. I can win by an extra point. <laughs> Man, I've had some painful stuff. I'm out of coffee too, folks. It took me 35 minutes to drink this little cup of coffee. Normally, I would drink this in about two. So, this playing these games kind of slow you down some. We ready? I'm ready. Okay, so I asked a question. You can answer first. All right, so for mm. Lester, I think it was when he fell off of voodoo. Ah, and she is very right, folks. Voodoo. I injured my shoulder, and it hurt me for weeks. At night, I had to put a body pillow under my arm, and whenever I would shift sides, that pillow would go between Jamie and I. Oh, yeah, it was the Great Wall. The Great <laughs> Wall of, you know, I'm a survivor. <laughs> And so, yeah, so that is finally has healed up for the most part. I still can't really have a lot of movement this way, a lot of strength, but no, it's just a pain. And so that, that was definitely my worst that I've taken. It, it, and I've been injured I'm a saying, lot. There's been a lot, but I would, I, I definitely know that that one was bad. That was weeks and weeks. Yeah. And it's, no, it's uh, been about a month, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And it's, and it's still sore. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so for mine, I put being kicked by Donkey Dan. Ah! Check it out, though. Dan's kick. Not only did Dan kick her, he also bit her. <laughs> and here's why. Okay, so that's been a while back. Jamie's still fairly new to the whole farm thing. And she doesn't know that during feeding time, these animals get into a bit of a frenzy. You can't hesitate. But I knew. It's not that I didn't know. I knew. But I was paying attention to the wrong animal. So, <laughs> so Ringo was coming at me. Okay, Ringo tends to be the most harmful thing in the little's pasture. He does. There's no, there's no denying that. Yeah, no denying that. So I'm paying attention to Ringo, but what I wasn't paying attention to is that Ringo was going for Dan's food, and Dan's face was right there. I didn't see Dan flip around to kick me. No, see, I saw from a different perspective, and my story is very different than yours. Same I answer. I lived it. Same answer. I lived it. Same answer, so we both get a point. But here's what really happened. Because I was watching the entire thing. You didn't save me. Jamie had a bucket of feed, and we normally walk from trough to trough to trough, pouring out their buckets. But you ha you've seen the videos. Once you start, you have to go. Yes. You can't just look pretty and lollygag through the pasture, no. because Dan's not going to take that mess. So Dan is what they call hangry. We've always said that Dan is that hungry, angry combo mix. Around dinner time, Dan gets mean. Mm -hmm. And so Jamie wants to feed the littles, I'll feed the bigs. And so I'm kind of talking her through it. And she takes the bucket and she opens the pasture gate. And it's true, you have to kind of keep your eye on Ringo. But Dan is following her and he's right on her tail. And she is just walking in a, a city girl's pace. Not no, no offense, city girls, but she's just walking like it's, I don't know if she's looking cute for me or what she's doing. But Dan's like, drop the damn food. And she wouldn't do it. So Dan <laughs> reached up and he bit her behind the arm. Uh -huh. And then she turned around and she starts screaming at him. Well, Dan turns his back and he kicks her in the leg. So she... <laughs> I couldn't wear skirts for two weeks after that one. It was yes. awful. Or short sleeve shirts. And it was summertime. It was horrible. And she had she was bruised up and it had bite marks. And he broke the skin, folks. Oh, he broke sucked. the skin. And I thought that she was going to leave me that day. <laughs> I thought she would for sure leave me and say, screw this, I'm done with this farm life. Bull crap, you know? Uh, but no, she stuck around and the wounds finally healed and she learned. <laughs> she learned a very important lesson. No more of that nonsense. Okay, we uh, both got a point on that one. We did. So, there's no matter, no matter what your question is, I'm still going to beat you. No, no. you could tie. No. If you get them both right and I get them both wrong, no, even if I get one wrong, 
There's no point for that. So as of right now, Lester has gotten four correct. Jamie's only gotten three right. This is the last question. We're at 39 minutes on this video. We got to go. All right. What's the People got to go. Y'all got lives. <laughs> what is the scariest thing that's ever happened on the farm? The scariest thing that's ever happened on the farm. Now, this is what you think the scariest thing is, right? Well, what we each think it is, yeah. What we each think it is. Well, I think your answer would be pretty easy. For myself, what was the most scary thing that ever happened? Mm. Uh, I might should put, ah, uh, I don't know. Okay, I think I have it. So since Jamie asked the question, I get the answer first. What is the scariest thing that's ever happened on the farm? I think Jamie's going to say the day she walked outside and saw that voodoo had thrown me off. Because it had knocked the air out of my lungs. I hit the ground hard. Boom! On my chest. Well, I tried to catch myself with my shoulder, obviously. You saw how that worked out for me. So I landed on my chest and the air whoo, come out. And if that's ever happened to you, you know the pain associated with it. I couldn't catch my breath. And I'd gotten up on my hands and my knees, and I was trying to breathe, and I could not catch air. So I don't know how long that moment lasted, but it felt like forever. And watching that video that she had recorded, I know that she's not a sprinter or a fast runner. So, <laughs> so from the time that she saw that horse come across that front yard, I'm just guessing it was pro to, to get out to me to where I finally had enough air to say, just leave me alone. I would say it was probably 30 seconds, maybe longer. And I, I'm i not one to be able to be without air that long. Maybe no one is. But uh, I think that was a scary moment for her, the scariest. Actually, it's not. I actually put Imelda. Oh! <clears throat> so, well. Imelda, what? No, go ahead. Um, Imelda was definitely the scariest uh time here since since I've been coming there's been a, there's been a few scary moments and things like that but Imelda <clears throat> Imelda had a look that's what I put for yours as well as Imelda so no. I, so she knows my answer I didn't know hers uh go ahead talk about Imelda if you, yeah, you know uh, Imelda <laughs> was a surprise to everyone like yes we knew there was a tropical storm we knew it was gonna be rain we had no idea the caliber of rain and we had no idea that something that had happened just two years before with Harvey that was supposed to be some 800 or 1,000 year flood could happen two years later. And not only could it happen, it happened in a matter of just a few hours. And even though we had plans A, B, and C, we were down the path of E and F. And um, I remember riding back on the tractor after we had you know, brought more goats to uh, Lester's Ark uh, and thinking like this is plan this is like plan E here. <laughs> we never planned that never happened. We never we never thought that that it would ever get to that point. But I remember thinking about what's next and and you know looking around and seeing that there's nowhere to drive, you know, that that could hold ev all the people that we were also seeing and not just not just us and our animals and uh, I was terrified that day because the skies were not stopping and you know, we didn't know if there was an end in sight, and, and I've never felt or seen rain like that in my life. That lasted, that was just like someone was standing above you and pouring a bucket over you for 12 hours. So, um, I'm, I'm proud of myself. It's hard to a person to say, oh, I'm proud of myself, but I guess because I experienced Harvey. You remember Forrest Gump, that movie, where Lieutenant Dan was on that shrimp boat and they were going through a horrible storm yeah and i think he had climbed to the top of it and he's like ha, 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 ha. what else you got bring it and i don't know why but through imelda even though i was scared for the animals i guess i had already experienced that 
and I was kind of laughing in the face of it at the time. And I don't mean to sound like I laugh in the face of natural disaster no. because I don't. Because a lot of folks lost their homes in Imelda. You know, we lost our barn. And luckily none of our animals passed in all of that because we had plans. But what I'm saying is, whereas during Hurricane Harvey flooding, I panicked. And I was a wreck. And I couldn't think straight. And because of me losing it, I lost, not only did I lose so many animals and vehicle and farm equipment and all of my personal keepsakes, all the kids things that I saved. I'm going to start crying again like a fucking baby. Um, just look over there for a minute. But you know, you, you even through all of that mess, you learn stuff. And so Imelda shows up and it starts dropping that same kind of rain and that water starts flowing out of that same direction, the bad direction. And you kind of realize that what's about to happen is, ha you know, what you thought would never happen again. Like you say, it was supposed to be a, you know, a thousand year flood, whatever. And it's happening again. And the hill where you've lived your entire life. This <laughs> 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 is the newlywed game. It's Valentine's Day. What the hell's wrong with me? Anyway, all of a sudden that hill that you thought would never, ever, ever be covered again is suddenly it's covered and your animals are panicked. And you're trying to stay calm. And I knew she was scared. And on the inside, I'm also equally scared. But I'm trying to laugh it off and play it off. And, you we know. We held it together the whole day, though. Seriously, we did. Yeah. And, and you know, there were several times where we came inside to take a pause, to just breathe. And, and neither one of us had words. And it wasn't about, it wasn't about, you know, what about our home or anything like that. It was, it was seriously about what's next and what do we do. And we worked well together. And we got through it, and I remember at the end of the night, after we had realized that the rain had stopped and we had a moment to breathe, and that might have been night two, I don't remember. All I know is I do remember that I went to go take a shower, and I finally lost it during that shower. And then I walk out to the living room and tell him that he can have the shower, and, and he was losing it too. Well, people just don't understand, you know, the mother nature can be so relentless and brutal. Sorry, <laughs> can we just end this video with my win? I got a final score is four for Lester. Jamie only scored three. Seems like I know this girl a lot better than she knows me. One point he knows me a lot better. And then he skewed the first question. But because I cried on video, that takes, that takes away at least some of my points. So, <sighs> folks, um, how do you end this? You know, uh, we're... It's Valentine's Day, and um, I'm, I'm gonna go eat some eggs. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm eating some eggs. <laughs> I think that uh, we thank you know we thank you guys all the time for loving us, and and we mean that from the bottom of our hearts. We wouldn't be here without all of you supporting us and cheering yes. us on. And um, I think uh, I think that's a wrap for our uh, farm version of the newlywed game. I'm not gonna talk. I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> it's supposed to be a happy Aww. moment. <laughs> Thank you guys. We Bye. love y'all. We do.